Hello, I'm Wes. Hi, I'm Shonda. And welcome, welcome to, to Dick Life. So we just got back from <clears throat> 12 days in Japan. Yes. And we'd like to start this off by telling you a little bit about how we got there and give you some tips and tricks. Yeah, anything to try to help you out a little bit. So first of all, we live in Northeast Ohio. And unfortunately, we don't really have a lot of great airports around here as far yeah. as deals are concerned. So we sort of just look around. We try Columbus, Cleveland, Detroit, Pittsburgh. Yep. Pretty and much anywhere we can find a good deal. So this time we actually found the flight to Japan first. We got a great deal out of LAX before travel even opened back up back in October. And we actually, I found the deal, it was on Slick Deals, which you can actually find lots of travel deals. So we flew Zip Air, which is Japan's version of Spirit or Frontier, I would say. And we got great deal on full flat seats, which is basically their version of business class for about $3,700 round trip for both of us, we were able to fly full flat. Now, let me add, that doesn't include any bells or whistles. There's no alcohol, there's no, no yeah. there's one meal. You get one meal and a water, and that is it. And we did get a bag full of amenities, a mask, a pillow, slippers, but I don't think that comes normally. I think it's an add-on, something you have to buy. I think yeah, I think it was part of the deal when we bought the tickets, yeah. That they were running. However, that is still a very good price for full flat <clears throat> seats. So from that, we had to get to LAX. We just booked a United flight out of Columbus. It happened to be the least expensive for our needs. Um, and Columbus is only about a 90 minute drive from us. We left pretty much in the morning and kind of beat the most of rush hour traffic and then arrived at the airport. We flew out and arrived in LA in the evening. We needed a hotel for the night so that we could catch our flight the next morning. We stayed at a travel lodge right near the airport. They had shuttle service from LAX to the travel lodge and for the money. It was pretty reasonable, yeah. The only thing that we had to watch was I think the shuttle they ran, like it was like at three or five or something. It was yeah. from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. and then 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. So there's a chunk in the middle of the day where there was no shuttle. Yep. And the travel lodge wasn't terrible. It was about $144 for a hotel right next to LAX. I don't think that's too bad. No, no, it wasn't too bad. Within range from that uh, hotel, there was lots of places you could kind of eat. Poor Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> we, within walking distance were a couple of fast food places. Um, we found a really good Hawaiian restaurant. Yeah, um, it was called Wiki Wiki Hawaiian Barbecue. <laughs> nice. Uh, the food was delicious and the portions were huge, huge by yeah. the way. We could have easily split a meal, which of course we didn't know before we went. But highly recommend that place, giving them a shout out. It was fantastic. Yeah, and I'll probably drop like a link. Uh, where that actually location yeah, is. Yeah, I think so. We had no issues whatsoever with Zip Air. Highly recommend it. I didn't have any troubles at all. The staff were fantastic. We pretty much laid down the whole flight and got a good bit of rest. Yeah, everybody it was everybody was very nice. Oh, I did take a Steam Deck on it and you could actually charge. That's a pretty high powered device and I was able to charge it while I played the thing right in my seat. They do have Wi-Fi access. So if you want snacks, beverages, alcohol, anything like that, you just order it and pay for it. It's pretty inexpensive, all things considered. Yeah. I think a can of Coke was like $2.50. Yeah, it was 200 yen. It was actually cheaper, I think, than most uh, United Airlines. Absolutely. So good deal. We highly recommend Zip Air. One thing we should mention is uh, we actually didn't even notice it until like two weeks before we left. You'd want to go to uh, Visit Japan Web and you want to fill out, I don't know if it will keep happening in the future with the pandemic ended now, but it was very convenient you just went in, you uploaded your vaccine documents, your passport info, and then basically it kind of gave you like a quick pass right through customs when you got into Japan. Yeah, we breezed right through. It did help that we were like the first people off of the plane because we were in those full flat seats. But yeah. I do have to say, we did talk to some other Americans later who didn't do that. And it, they were tied up in customs for quite some time. And very easy to understand, even though we were in a foreign country. One thing I did want to mention in passing, because someone asked me on Facebook, is that you do not need 
need to apply for a visa to enter Japan. At least if you live in the United States. Correct. All you need is your passport and you're good to go. We should also mention that we flew into Narita. There are two major airports in Tokyo, Haneda and Narita. I think almost all of the major international carriers fly into Narita, which is about an hour and a half outside of Tokyo. Haneda is a little closer, but not quite as simple to get to. Yeah. So now we've arrived in Tokyo. One thing we didn't do ahead of time, which we highly recommend doing if you need it, is to reserve Wi-Fi before you get to the airport. Yeah, we actually got in line for a reservation only one because it didn't specifically say very well. And then we waited in line and got to the front. And we had to go around the corner just by the uh, welcome to Japan Nintendo thing and basically get a uh, Wi-Fi right there. We rented a portable Wi-Fi due to the fact that, you know, things are spotty over there and we weren't exactly sure how our Wi-Fi would work. Yeah, it basically makes it so it's easy. You can connect as many Wi-Fi devices as you want. So basically we just connected our phones all into that and then we could do pretty much everything we did with our phones without buying, getting, buying SIM cards or needing service in that country. So I think for 11 days of Wi-Fi and we upgraded to yeah. the second tier. So we didn't get the most basic. We didn't get the highest tier we got somewhere in the middle yeah and we i want unlimited data i want to say the total for 11 days was 166 usd worked pretty well the battery on ours was bad i will say i have t-mobile and i didn't have any trouble with wi-fi um not using the portable wi-fi but i don't know i guess it depends on your carrier so better safe than sorry yeah. it's probably best to get the portable wi-fi yeah and we did that like she said we had that faulty battery but luckily we had a large battery and we kind of fed that into the wi-fi and kind of powered it through the day so of course obviously along with that our other recommendation would be take a very good portable battery because you will need it Yep. Yeah, for sure. Even like depending to charge your phone and all this other stuff that you carry around with you all day. Because pretty much you leave the hotel room and you come back at the evening. And if you're like us, you take tons of pictures and videos. So <laughs> yeah. your battery will die at some point. <laughs> oh yeah. One other thing on the Wi-Fi is I do think we paid like an upcharge of what was it? Maybe 400 yen a day for an insurance on it. Yes. And I have to say like maybe after the fact now, we probably wouldn't have got the insurance. I mean, I guess it just depends how responsible a person you are but i do have to say inside the japanese country there's hardly any theft at all so putting insurance on this thing that you i mean i guess you could lose it but there's pr the chances of somebody actually stealing it from you are almost zero there which you will hear us probably talk about ad nauseum <laughs> through yeah, these yeah few Japan videos. It's insane. So as far as theft goes, you really don't have to worry about that. If you're prone to losing things, get the insurance. Next thing we recommend that you do at the airport is get out some cash. People will tell you that you can use your credit card. It's fine. rare. <laughs> at amusement parks, at major stores, but for the most part, Japan is still a cash country. My recommendation, as soon as you get to the airport, is to take out- I took 300 yen on, I guess it just depends on- 300,000. Yeah, 300,000, sorry, <laughs> yen. I, it just depends on whatever you plan on spending. Yeah, but basically in the airport, when you're look coming up, or at least they're through Nar Narita, you basically, after you come through like the, uh, where you picked up your Wi-Fi and all that stuff, you'll come up and you'll have 7-Eleven ATM machines. And that's pretty much, just get them out of the 7-Eleven ATM machines. The conversion fees were very low. Even when I took 300 yen or 300,000 yen out, I think it charged me a $7 fee each time. Not only that, they're international, so there's English. The first thing you do is you pick your language. Um, so they're, they're very easy to use. Not the least bit confusing, I don't think. Nope, I, it was very easy. Then from there, the next thing we did is get a Suica card, which, um, you know, if you watch our later, later videos, you'll understand those are used for trains, subways, sort of any public transportation. They can also be used at vending machines. Yeah, you can even use them at like, I think almost McDonald's accepts them, pretty much all fast food, 7-Elevens. Lawson's. Yeah, it's pretty much just like a, a universal cash card there. Correct, so it's a very handy thing to have. If it's not a Suica card, they have all different kinds of versions. I think there's five or six different kinds. But at the airport, we just picked up a Suica card. I think we put 30 American dollars roughly, so 3,000 yen on it to begin with. And that almost got us through the entire trip. So I wouldn't go crazy putting a ton of money on there. Yeah, you don't need a lot. You the don't. subway systems are very reasonable inside the city. Really, just if you're on a bullet train, those are expensive, but everything else is very reasonable. Buses, 
subways, all that stuff. Also, one thing when getting a Suica card, you need to make sure you get one card per person. The only reason we mention this is that we ran into some people who told us that they tried to get by using one Suica card for both of them. You cannot get through the gates no. at the train station. I assure you security will stop you. Yeah. Basically, the cards are like a digital imprint where it tags you in and out of a gate. And if we, two people hit it twice, it messes up the whole system. Correct. So just bite the bullet. Yeah. Don't try to save money. Yeah, get two and, cards. Right. Or a card per person. Correct. So on the subject of bullet trains, the other thing you want to do when you're at the airport is pick up your or, Japan Rail Pass. Yeah, either you you want to get that ahead of time in advance, but while you're there, you can either set your activation date. Like, But when we were there, we actually activated it three days into the trip because we kind of just sat around Tokyo at the beginning, and it was a waste of money to actually activate that card then. So you can go online before you leave. You want to do it about a month and a half before you go. You can order your Japan Rail Pass. I got us first class seven days. It wasn't terrible. For the two of us for seven days, it was less than $600 for a first class seat on Japan Rail. Honestly, it was worth every penny. Yeah. It comes really rapidly. I think it got here in about three or four days. Yeah, so it was quick. So you don't have to worry about the shipping if you wait too long to order it. It will still get here. And you'll really want that, is especially if you're hopping around from cities really quick, because if you start looking at those uh, bullet train prices, they're almost the price of flying to like short distance cities in the United States. Like almost like from Ohio to Orlando could be almost the price of a bullet train there. And if you do have oversized luggage, and by oversized I mean anything bigger than a roller carry-on, you will need to sit in the first class train because there is nowhere to store it on the regular trains. One other thing I will mention, <clears throat> most of the people there speak some English. Sometimes it's very limited, but most of them do. While there were issues sometimes with the language, we didn't find ourselves at any time overly frustrated. I think you just have to be patient. They will figure out how to communicate with you, and if you're patient, you can figure out how to communicate with them. Yeah, we didn't have really any issue, like at least to the hotels and all that stuff, you pretty much, you can get by, they all know money and everything like that. Everybody knows numbers. It's kind of a universal right. language of the world. And I do highly recommend before you leave, at least learning a few basic phrases. You don't have to go crazy. Hello, good morning, goodbye, please, thank you. Trust me, they will appreciate it so much if you just make an effort to say arigato, which is thank you. I also do have to say, like, even if uh, a couple of the cat people we talked to, they had excellent English and I actually commented on them on their English and they got very excited that <laughs> they're speaking English. So yeah, just, you know, go out of your way to just learn a few phrases. It's not that difficult. It'll get you a long way. So when we arrived at the airport, we decided not to activate our seven day JR pass because for the first few days, we were just going to stay centrally in Tokyo. Yeah, so we ended up, we bought a, uh, yeah, just a JR train ticket, and that was basically from Narita Airport to Shinjuku. One train all the way to Shinjuku. And it was about an hour and 20 minutes, I would yeah. say. Yeah, it's not a quick ride. We were able to take our large luggage yes, on yeah. that train and <clears throat> store it right behind us, so that part was nice. And that took us directly into <clears throat> Tokyo Station, which is huge. You can look on the JR Japan Rail website before you go. It'll give you an idea of the types of passes, where the trains go, roughly how much it will cost you. And we did all of that before we left, so we felt fairly comfortable with it before we got there. And when you actually get to the JR Station, I think depending on, uh, in the next episode, we'll talk about the hotel we stayed at there. But I think on a lot of the hotel web pages, they'll actually tell you the exit you need to leave Shinjuku Station. Because if you actually walk out of one of the wrong exits in, in Tokyo out of one of these things, it can add like another, like almost another mile onto your walk. Like, Which I'm laughing at buildings. because that's what we did. <laughs> yeah. So don't make the same mistake we did and walk out the south exit when you need to walk out the east exit and add 15 minutes to your walk with a gigantic piece of luggage in the middle of Tokyo. Yeah, because it will make it, <laughs> after all the traveling, it will be a little stressful right there. But yeah, we basically, it took us a second to figure out because we actually had to drop down another street level to actually get to the level we needed to. And then it was very confusing just getting the GPS because some of the buildings are extremely tall right there. So the GPS was wandering all over the place. 
Needless to say, once we found the right exit, we did get on our way. We probably walked an extra four blocks than we needed to. Or more. Yeah. One thing we should mention, all of the streets, stores, inside of subway yeah. and train stations, everywhere, are these little ribbed lines on the then when you get to a crosswalk there's little dots these really are fantastic because they're for blind people however when you're carting luggage through the streets they are a bit of a pain as you get to know me more you will realize that i am the clumsiest person on the planet <laughs> and i actually tripped and fell in the middle of the street in tokyo so that was fun <laughs> yeah but watch out for those it does make a pain for pulling your luggage you know what when you know what they're for it's all good and you just gotta try to avoid them if you have a piece of rolling luggage. So that was basically how we got to Tokyo. In our next episode, we will be talking about our first night there, our hotel where we stayed, the area we chose to stay in, and then how we managed to get around from there. So this was just our video of our experience, and all we're trying to do is give you some tips and tricks. You certainly don't have to follow our itinerary or do anything the way that we did it. We're just trying to be helpful. Yeah, just trying to give you some tips and help you out. So whatever you decide, to, to do, do just, just get, get out, out there, there and, and do it. it if you like this video or it helped you out in any way hit like and subscribe thanks for watching